Rape has been declared a national emergency in Sierra Leone by President Julius Madabiu, who has also declared a life sentence for perpetrators. Now, this was inspired by the increase of rape cases in the country, despite the efforts made by several local and international organizations. Police statistics say sexual and gender-based violence almost doubled in 2018, totaling 8,505 in a country of 7.5 million people, from a previous figure of 4,750 in 2017. Now, most heart-rending of all is that 2,579, which is about a third of these cases, are against minors. So today, the Phoebe's Will platform discusses the topic, how do we reduce rape in Sierra Leone? All right, guys. Yes, it's the Phoebe's Will platform, and today that's exactly what we're discussing on my platform. How do we reduce rape in Sierra Leone? You know, it's quite difficult to talk about ending it because ending problems, well, it's not that easy, but reducing the rate of uh, certain things can work. So today, how do we reduce rape in Sierra Leone? And to talk about that, I have um, Chen Oba and I have Peggy Ekuma with me to talk about this. Um, first of all, before you, you solve any problem, you need to identify the problem, the root cause of the problem. So it was deliberate to get a gentleman and a lady. Most times when, it, when we talk about rape and some of these issues around women, we're just limiting ourselves to women, but it goes beyond that. We need the men to come on board and play a role to talk. So this first segment of the program, let's look at why we think men rape women. Prior to now, we know men, people would give excuses to say, well, it's the way the young women dress, they're too sexy, they're too revealing and attractive, and it's tempting. But would you still say that for the babies in wrappers, babies of three months, six months, that don't even have teeth, they don't have boobs, they have nothing whatsoever, you would say. The case of the oldest woman that was raped in Sierra Leone, 80 something years old. How attractive was that 80 something year old woman or babies in rapper? So, that in itself, well, one might say it's not an excuse. So, now let's come to look at why do you think men rape? I'll start with you, Cheno, because you're a man. Luckily, you're a decent man, so that's a good thing. So, why do you think men rape? So, first of all, thank you for having me on the show mm -hmm. and thanks for continuing this conversation on this very important issue. Interestingly, I, so I happen to teach a course at Frabe College on gender-based violence. So this is a subject that I have been discussing with my students a lot. I start by saying we have to establish that sexual feelings are general to males and females. Females have desires just as much as men have desires. You see a guy walking by and you think he looks good and you have imaginations just, just as human. much as men do. The reason females do not go on and jump on men when they see them, one of my students said, well, it's because of physical strength. Yeah, we're not strong enough to do no, it. No, but that's not, that's not a good reason because if it's about physical strength alone, then 35-year-old women will be raping 70-year-old boys. Because, because most of the rape that happens happens, keep in mind, 80% of rape cases in our country are happening with girls who are 18 and below. So it is inherently a power imbalance. Rape is a consequence of a certain power relationship. Rape is just a symptom of that inherent power imbalance. The way that we are raised, we are socialized, Men are socialized in certain ways in our community. The idea that a woman's body is your property, 
when you need it, you have control and rights over it. And for people who say it's about the way you dress and it's about the way you feel, I, I ask agree. them, if, God forbid, your sister walks into the room right after and she's wearing something, you don't jump at her. You don't jump after your mom. You don't jump after rape. It's about power. It's about the people you feel you have power and control over. It's about the pe you know, it's an exp it's a perverse form of control. And it often happens from people who are debased, based on the way they have been raised, based on the socialization process that's produced them, based on the way we have taught boys and men the way they grew up, based on this culture of toxic masculinity. They feel like they get a pat on their back by claiming how many conquests that they have had. The number of women who I don't sleep with, I mean, I'm a hard man. So all of those things, when they converge and they are debased and you believe, and also the expectation of impunity. Because we have a systematic culture of impunity and a, a culture as well where if a woman is raped, she knows when it comes out, the price on her is sometimes even higher than the price on the accused. So all of those factors, she knows if I, if I go and, and, and complain, the guy knows that too. He knows so that he because he's in power, that's the use of the word advantage is power. It's an inherent power imbalance so that creates this. The yes. men who rape do it majorly, as you're saying, to summarize that, um, to feel that they have advantage to feel power. To feel powerful. Oftentimes, they have no power. Terry, do you language. agree with his views on why men rape? Of course, I do, in every sense of the word. Uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that we continue to factor. Um, this important conversation in our daily uh, lifestyle because it's, it's so important. Of course, when you talk about rape, one of the effects it's likely to leave on the victims is psychological effect. So it's so important for society to, con to continue to make it an integral part of the conversation. Of course, what Chernow has said, and he also has so about much about masculinity. In, yes, in the, the setup of the whole country itself, where it's male dominated. Yes, it's a it's a man driven world where the men feel they're in charge, they're in control, they have power, they have the authority, and they're just everything is in their favor. So it's flexible enough for them to just do things and just get away with it because I am a man. Of course. Now, when you look at the Fomenting rate of rape, you begin to to think because previously people used to assume, just as you said, people used to assume, assume one of the reasons that inspire rape is the way women are being dressed. Sexiness. But I mean, exactly the sexiness, the attractive looks of women. I mean, captivate men into raping them. But when you when you look at the nature of rape as of now, of course, young girls as young as three months have been raped and then you begin to ask what satisfaction do those type of men get from doing those acts on such innocent girls so i think it, it just has changed so it would has you to say do it's it. more psychological as well on their part on the part of, of the men who rape yeah it it, it has to do it it has some psych psychological effect and one of things I think uh, uh, has to do with the fact that they they want to command this power just as Cheryl said I mean they want to command this power over the sense of authority the sense of superiority over the victims themselves but but in all of this we still have some men who continue to see rape as an act that should not have a space in the society. Yeah, that's a good thing. While we unfortunately, yes, unfortunately, we still have perpetrators moving around and committing. amongst us, who amongst sometimes us. join us in so the discussions. Think, yeah, so I think for most part of it, it's it, it's discretionary. It has to do with the individual um, um, will to do it. Because, yeah, whilst just like the analogy I've just given, while some we have some men. You know, perpetrating the violence, you still have some men 
joining the campaign, being in solidarity with women's group to put an end to this. So for most part, for most part of it, I think rape has been inspired by individual urge. Again, and China, looking at the psychological aspect, because when you look at uh, people who rape, sometimes you see fathers raping their own children. You see, I, I think we've had a, a, a rare case of a, a boy raping his own mother. Do you see this as normal behavior for normal human beings? All right, so rape, this is so today I, I, I have an article that just got released by your media, AYV, and I'm basically criticizing the imposition of a mandatory life sentence on all rape of minors. But it's. It, yeah, we'll don't, come don't, to that don't, aspect. Don't take yes. it black and white. I'm criticizing we'll it yes, because. We'll it is dangerous to reduce rape as just happening in one form. The problem with our national debate right now is we're all incensed and outraged by the rape of a five-year-old. That's what everybody's moved by. We all look for the extreme. I keep saying we have a culture of rape. The way we talk to women, we rape them by the way we talk to them. The way we present them on the media. We're raping women by the way we present women in the media. And we're, everything has become discourse. so sexist that uh, exactly. even when you go to men, even for us as journalists, you want a simple oh. interview. There's not a Next single thing woman. You know, the, it's something not, stupid. I always say, not a single woman who's got to where they are in any position of power that's not been asked for sex in exchange for what she's been. I don't say she's given it, yeah. but she's definitely been asked. Mm -hmm. Not one. So, Either directly or indirectly, or but there's always a, a move starts from towards school, that. the teachers, and the impunity builds throughout that, and people see it. So what I was coming to go to your point, you mentioned incest. What I mean is rape happens in different forms, and some rape is a product of uh, mental derangement. Some people have pure mental health sickness, some people have mental health issues, but again, the root cause of that is the same. It's the idea that when I feel powerless, what I've been social, people, you don't just get up tomorrow and start rape. So actually, studies have shown that men who beat their wives are more likely to rape. It comes from the same place. It's the exercise of power. It's control. Treating it's feeling like I should subject to your, and also your body is my property. And so when I need to express myself on that body, whether you want it or not, whether you are ready for it or not, the amount of rape that happens in marriage in this country, pretty much. A lot of women, their men go out and they get drunk and they come back and they insist how far you should do it. We don't even talk about that. The majority of rape in this country is not happening to five-year-olds. I'm just as outraged about the rape of a five-year-old and I want those guys to rot in hell and never come back. We cannot pass laws that treat rape as one thing. It's a complex, multifaceted issue that happens throughout the fabric of our society. And if we're serious about it, we need to approach it in a more strategic and serious way and deal with it in a different forms and think about what we can do across society. Now, to solve again, it. I'm still on the aspect of rape. We always focus on um, rape from men forcefully having sex with underage girls. But there's also another aspect of rape where women um, have sex with underage boys. So sometimes if you talk to some of these men and ask, what was your first experience? It's always by an adult woman, in most cases. It's always by an adult woman, someone who was close to home, whom the parents could trust enough to be around that kid. But they say mostly the men don't come out to talk about rape. So in that area of women sexually abusing boys, who now grow up and don't talk about it and feel like, well, it's fine anyway, I was, I was able to successfully convert into a man. That in itself is rape right there. Because we don't talk about it, because they don't report it, doesn't change the fact that it is rape. So in that case of women raping boys, why do you think that happens? Power. Same thing. So the... It's a real thing in Sierra Leone, and I don't want to... I don't want to diminish it. A lot of boys, their first sexual experience was with a female that was probably older than them. Probably the men picking a rose, the cousin, the auntie in some cases, because we have, a, again, we have a hypersexualized society 
but we pretend that we are these very moral people yeah. outside. Decent. We put on this beautiful show. That's a, okay. it's a fake show. Um, so when you have sometimes is again i have to say compared to the rate of sexual violence and assault against women this is the minority and this is the exception and we should be able to separate yes, that obviously. so we don't allow this to consume this conversation but you're right in some cases this happens and I, that's why i think there should be laws that govern these issues sex with a minor has to be punished Whether by male law. or female of course the, the, the law has to be very clear on these things and there should be questions around power and agency but on the social aspect of it the reason why in fact society is not outraged by it because when a man has sex everybody's okay with it even if it's a boy in fact the boys when they, they are feel teenagers they, they feel like that they have achieved it's, it's maturity but it's part of the debased toxic masculinity i talk about because we do not treat it in the kind of way and the reason why it's bad it's not sex it's abuse it's abuse of power that's no. why it's bad because the older person had power and knowledge that the younger person did not have and they used the the possession of that power and knowledge to exploit the person without that's the definition of gender based violence so now that's quite a, a pace setter there you know now that um men or well people who rape basically it's just to ascertain power to feel powerful now we've been able to clear that part how now as a country can we be able to reduce rape because ending it that's a long journey i'm not sure any country would be able to get to there will still be few cases of rape no matter how hard your laws or actions are but then how do we now as a country reduce rape from the aspect of the women and girls what do they do to prevent rape what should the men do to help reduce rape in the country what should the authorities do in as in well government officials and all in terms of laws and all that and again the judiciary what role can they play in helping the country to reduce rape cases in the country gentlemen and lady just stay with us it's time for a break let's take a quick message from our sponsors Roquel commercial bank and Sierra Pharmatech would be back. What's that you doing about for go this morning? Are they going to bank? Oh, you know, some man go for go pull small face. Eh? <laughs> Are they go shop for dunk to we? <laughs> and not look late safe. You no need for you about yourself. Eh? All you need is a smartphone. Oh, you did download the app? Easy! What you did talk? With your SIM couple, you can do cash withdrawal, cash deposit, pay for goods, you did check your balance, transfer from one local bank account to another local bank account. Or you can transfer from one local bank account to another bank account when not a local bank account. You can pay bills like NPA, ESA, DSTV, and plenty, plenty other bill levels. You can even buy airtime for your GSM phone. In Nota Pleo, requested for foreign exchange transaction. You can do it with your worker SIM couple. You can make payment through e-check account. That means eh, you can pay for you will not even get account. And cash e-check from any local commercial bank ATM machine. You mean say, I just need for open my phone. I do all my transaction on my phone. Just go to the agent. When are the FIA business person? And you can do plenty other things there. Like for check your balance. For yourself, well, an officer I need for Guna Bank Direct. I'd go into Kukri first. From there, I do my transaction on my phone with Roquel SIM Copper. You phone, are you bank? Remember, say, this product, na salon no more in the work. Okay, welcome back from that commercial break. A message from our sponsors, Roquel Commercial Bank and Sierra Pharmatech. So we're still at Golden Tulip Hotel. Um, former Kim Bima, a nice place just at the back of um, at Aberdeen here and thanks to the people here for hosting us. Um, Cherno and Therie, now how do we reduce rape? We'll take it systematically. For the women, as a woman, what do you do to help yourself in a way that a man would not rape you? In this, I'll start with you Therie. Okay. How do you prevent rape as a woman? Okay, I actually don't want to talk about, I don't want to make dress code a subject matter mm -hmm. in this point I'm giving now. Because 
by virtue of the nature of rape cases, it's clear that it's not because of the way women have been dressed. So first of all, I think as a society, we have a great role to play in bringing to light every incident of rape cases because um, when we begin to discourage the act of compromising when rape cases, when rape incidents happen, it's like we're giving scope to subsequent or to rise the rates of the particular um, incident, which is rape. So first of all, I think as a society, we have we should break the culture of silence. We should begin to break the culture of silence and talk. So you're people. saying more women should come out and speak up of if they're victims. Of course. So there's an awareness, there's a tension, yes. there's a voice yes. constantly being heard about rape. Yes. Aside that, Peya, what more do you think, uh, because obviously you've stated your point that you don't think dress code contributes. Aside from that, what else can a woman do to help make sure that, well, you don't become a victim of rape? Now, for those who are victims, yes, come out and speak about it. Those who have not experienced it, how do you prevent that from happening? Do you have thoughts on that? Well, because we actually do not have control over what happens, you will never know what happens the next minute. I think, well, we should, first of all, be on guard to ensure that we don't go to places that are likely to expose us to such incidents or places that will make us feel vulnerable. And uh, basically, we should just have a guard and because, like I earlier said, I don't actually want to make the dress code a subject matter because it's proven that that's not one of the reasons why men do with women. And I think we should begin to raise awareness among ourselves and yeah, basically talk, talk against any incidents of rape when they occur and not compromise or not condoning the culture of silence because of course it's, 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 a, it's such a provided act and it should not have a space in the society, we should continue to talk against it and thereby discourage any act of uh, rape. Thank you, Faria. Now, Cherno, yes, what do you feel women can do, what do you think women can do to prevent rape? I agree with everything that Faria has just said. What I would say in addition to that is raise daughters who know their body and can take control and know when to say and be assertive. You know, I was, I was being provocative the other day. I said, the reason we have a culture of rape is we have too many good girls. We need more bad girls. If somebody tells you, move this way, you're just allowed to follow. No. You should be strong, assertive, know when to fight back, strong enough to fight back, strong enough to say no, and, and have autonomy and control over your own body. Know that your body is not a property of another man. Know that a, a, a guy is not going to just walk by his lap. I mean, and you have this, and this kind of like I have a hand. That's how it starts. That's how you begin to teach women that first of all, it's okay that their body can be violated, um, violated in these very perverse ways. In, in so, a way that it seems normal. Exactly, because for it, I mean, there are a lot of studies that show also that women who think that it's okay for them to be beaten are much more likely to be beaten. Women who think it's okay as well for them to be raped are much more also in some cases are likely to get raped. So you need to you need to raise girls and women who are strong, who are assertive, who are not good girls by our traditional notions. But I like what you said. We need to break the culture of, of silence. You need to be willing to come up and speak up. With so many women have experiences of sexual violence and rape in our society but we make it difficult for them, we make it prohibitive for them to come forward because the cost on them is so high. People think if I came forward right now, I will not have any man who wants to marry me, I will not have anybody who wants to hang around me. And, and the moment people see you, you know we have this thing about person. describing people. Of course. Oh, yeah, you know really Phoebe, it. which Phoebe? Oh, that one. Yeah, we really always it. want to use something negative to help people to remember who the person of is. And, and that's something women can help with as well. Because sometimes, in fact, the victim blaming the victim shaming happens, the covering of perpetrators happens. A lot of times it's the women who come together and because again they've been socialized to thinking that you know law talk and a corner or law give them so there's a zero there needs to be and I hate this expression uh, zero 
zero sum, uh, zero tolerance for any and all forms of sexual harassment, exploitation, and abuse. It's Growing up as a girl, my mom always put my sister and I together to talk to us about these things that it's not okay for any man whatsoever to touch you inappropriately. And she would always help us understand what inappropriate touching means. Exactly. And she taught us that if a man wants to force himself on you, just because my mom has some martial arts background, she just said, just, just give him a solid kick between the legs. That might be able so to your mom was run away or give a bite girl. something. She was always you teaching just stand us there and what be a to good do. girl and be told to do what to do. And myself, personally, when I was growing up, I had that encounter. Someone almost raped me, but because my mom had taught me what to do, I can recall I was just in um, senior um, secondary school then. The person was making advances at me, and so much so he was going to come to rape me. But I recall my mom said, just plant a solid kick between the legs. That's what I did. And then he wanted to grab me. I, give, I gave him a bite. And then I could run out of his office. Okay. Um, but now with the women, the women, the guardian, the parents, exactly. how many of them really talk to their kids and help them understand these things that it is not okay for uncle whatsoever to pass by and touch my boobs. Hey, me where? That's where it starts. Yeah, I think, I think we need more of your kind of mother in this society. Because society, the society has a lot to play with the way we raise our children. Just as our society raises girls into believing that you should be ambitious and not too much, and then we have a way of telling the boys, oh, you should be prepared to, oh, you should be prepared to always exude power over the woman or you know whatever you find yourself in. So I think society has a role to play in, first of all, creating the sense of awareness into our girls, into believing that you should own your body, like Chenwa has been saying, and give them this sense of this sense of belief in themselves that you should not permit violation against your body. You should not allow a man to touch you in a way that does not suit you. And you should have you should you should have the leverage to voice it out when you don't like it. So I think we need more of your kind of mother and to get the awareness raising and you know treats the issue from the bottom again with um rape cases uh, still on the aspect of society and community basically what role can be played you know that rape obviously does not happen in the ocean neither up space or in the sky it's either in the house or behind somewhere I have this habit of always, when I'm walking in the streets, I'm, especially when it's dark and secluded areas, I always pay attention. I can recall there was a time at Tender Town, I saw a girl, and me looking at the girl, I'm like, this girl is really not 18. And then the man she was standing with, that man could well be in his 40s. And the way they were standing together, so I stood there like I was making a call. I just wanted to hear that conversation and see whether it's a relative or something. And along the line, I discovered that this is not a normal conversation. This is like a boyfriend and a girlfriend. And when you see the age gap, this is like 20 something years difference. And this kid is not up to 18. I walked up to them. I said, excuse me, young lady, can I have a word with your side? She said, okay. We stepped aside. I spoke with her. What's your name? Where do you live? How old are you? She, the way she was responding, but the way she was looking at me, I asked him, why are you asking me all these questions? And she said, well, well, my age, I can't tell you. I said, young girl, it's for your own good. I look at you, I see you like you're not 18. And I know that man is way older than you are. So I'm thinking as a responsible citizen, what is a girl like you doing with this man? It's dark. This is a quiet area. Whether he's your boyfriend or not, what if he rapes you? She was just, well, me, I'm above 18, but I know she's not above 18, but I don't have her birth certificate, what do I do? So in, in communities, rape happens where if people are vigilant enough, if you listen, you hear a girl screaming, because no rape victim goes through lip silently, except if there's a gun to your head. Some do. Which hardly happens. Some do, because so again, some with rape the is with someone now, in I'm power. sending it back to you now. If your father is raping you, you're not shouting. So in uncle, those cases where there's a shout, you sleep, you, you're not shouting. In not cases saying. where there, there are strangers or the person is fighting, as a community, how do we help to reduce rape? 
what role can you play? Is that for me? Yes, that's ah. for you, Cherno. <laughs> okay. Um, as, so, as I said, we have a culture of rape. And we're all complicit in rape. One of the things everybody's talking about is this rape of minors and the declaration of a life sentence. Forty percent of girls in Sierra Leone are married by age eighteen. Did you know that? Forty percent. That's almost one in two. Such a shame. In it some districts, it's sixty percent of girls. You know what that means? It means as a society, we all come together, we we sign up and we celebrate and mortgage the, their future. The institutionalized rape of girls. That's half of girls. So that means, as a society, we come together and we bless it. The pastors are complicit, the imams are complicit, the, the chiefs are complicit, our mothers are complicit, everybody in our family. So we need to come together and, and redefine what our values are. The same things we talked about, what women need to do. It's not exclusive to women. As a society, we need to raise boys to think differently, to believe that just because you're a boy does not make you superior to a girl. To understand that your sister is not your property or that any girl that passes by is not somebody you take advantage of. So it starts from there. It starts from this zero tolerance of all forms of abuse. Beating. In my home I say, nobody hits anybody in my home. I tell people, I have a 10 year old kid now, he's never been hit. Because he knows that violence is not part of the toolkit. Because that's how it starts. If you sanction violence as a way, violence becomes a way of life. So we need to change the way we think and, and, and approach violence, how we approach um, conflict in society. We need to make sure that, again, we can set rules at the top, but we need to engage communities. So setting rules at the top, what um, more can the authorities do? Now let's look at um, your thoughts on the just um, the statement passed by the president, which is now being um, put into law, that um, uh, those who are found guilty of rape should be sentenced private prison. Does said, that help us to solve the problem? I think that's that's a step mm -hmm. towards putting an end to the menace just rape. And but I also think the government needs to do more in addressing the issue of rape. How? Because Can do? yes, now we've had a lot of rape incidents that are yet to be served justice and we still have upcoming ones which are likely to not be served justice. So now when, when we talk about, when we look at the structures that are set aside to um, pursue rape incidents, there is little equipment or resources to help them aid rape investigation. So if, you, if, if we have structures that are incapacitated to some extent, you have a situation in which we would not be able to track down evidences of rape. So the, the president, of course, will make a policy against uh, um, life imprisonment, against rape perpetrators. But if we do not have systems in place, uh, um, rape victims will continue to face injustice. Because at the end of the day, when a rape incident has been presented in court and then there's no evidence to support the claim, it will be thrown out of the court. So we don't want to see such a situation. I think the government should really uh, um, um, capacitate institutions responsible to, un to undertake investigations around rape cases. Because when you look at, I was reading something yesterday on the internet. I think it, 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 it was something which Guardian, the Guardian Post did. It said, um, <coughs> rape victims, have, 80, have the likelihood to be men, uh, mentally disordered. To have mental, yeah. Eighty percent chance to be mentally disordered, yeah. to have a mental disorder. You understand? So, and and that's that's striking. That should be striking for us as a country, because we 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 we're looking at a part and with the number of rape cases we have, that tells you the number of people who will be having with um, mental disorder, of course. which is not good. And, and you and I are talking about gender equality, but at this stage, if we're not able to protect our girls from being psychologically tortured, how do we hope to raise a society of girls who will grow up strong, believing in themselves, getting control of their minds, being confident of what they can do? So at the end of the day, we'll end up not achieving anything. When you look at 
gender equality in some sense of the word. Now I'm still can, interested can in your yes, I'm yes. still interested in your your thoughts on yes, what yeah. you want to add to that and of course your your thoughts on how the president's declaration what does it do to help us solve the problem? And still, with the aspect of prosecuting these cases, the resources in the country, how do you successfully prosecute and ensure justice? Because sometimes, some of these cases, few of them, it's not actually rape, it's just a setup. Either because there's a dispute somewhere, there's some amount of untruthfulness in it. So we'll come shortly. Let's take another commercial break from our sponsors. Hold your thoughts. We'll be right back. It's the Phoebe's World Platform. Sponsors are Rokel Commercial Bank and Sierra Pharmatech. What's that you did about for go this morning? Are they gonna bank? Oh, you know some man get for go pull small face. Eh? <laughs> Are they go shop for dong to we? <laughs> I don't look late, safe. You no need for you about yourself. Eh? All you need a smartphone. Oh, you did download the app. Easy. What you did talk? With your SIM couple, you can do cash withdrawal, cash deposit, pay for goods, you can check your balance, transfer from one local bank account to another local bank account. Or you can transfer from one local bank account to another bank account when not a local bank account. You can pay bills like NPA, ESA, DSTV, and plenty, plenty other bill levels. You can even buy airtime for your GSM phone. In not a play, request for foreign exchange transaction. You can do it with your local SIM couple. You can make payments through e-check account. That means eh, you can pay for you will not even get account. And cash e-check from any local commercial bank ATM machine. You mean say, I just need for open my phone. I do all my transaction on my phone. Just go to the agent. When at the FIA business person. And you can do plenty other things there. Like for check your balance. For yourself. Well, an officer need for Guna Bank Direct. I go to Kukri first. From there, I do my transaction on my phone. With Rokel SIM Copo. You phone, are you bank? Remember say, this product na salon no more in the work. Welcome back from that um, commercial break. Yes, Cheno, I'm still interested in your thoughts. You wanted to say something added to what um, Theria was saying earlier before the break. Oh, thank you very much. So I think the declaration of rape as a national emergency mm -hmm. is a fantastic move. President Bio should be applauded for that. It showed that he's listened. It showed that he's elevating the issue and that we can no longer deny it. Because one of the first ways that a culture of rape persists is the denial of a culture of rape. People think, I know the happen, but not exceptional. But the state is now saying, we agree, it's happening. And it's, it's happening on a large scale. And it's scale, happening on a large so scale, and, and it requires the attention of the state. What I'm less excited about are some of the prescriptions that have been imposed which, me, which in the state of emergency. Number one, the idea that there should be life imprisonment for Sentence. anybody found, um, guilty. found guilty of rape of a minor. You have to remember that a minor in Sierra Leone is anybody who is 18 years and below. I do not sit here and support that if a 19 year old sleeps with a 17 year old, that that 19 year old should go to jail for life. So okay, you're that. okay with the life sentence, but there should be a consideration I'm of age. That's the problem. The problem when you make law, you know, you, are, you said you were born in Bow. There's a Mende parable that says the chief should not make laws when they are angry. Or when they are happy. Exactly. Right now we are all angry. We're, we, we want action. Rape is a cultural issue. It's embedded in our culture. To deal with it, we need to have a more nuanced and strategic approach. There are things that are proven to work. But you cannot tell the courts that you have no more discretion. What's that going to mean? And it's not because I care about just a 19-year-old but because I care about the possibility of reporting. Now, if I'm likely to report my 24-year-old cousin, keep in mind most rape happens with people you know. Mm -hmm. If I want that 24-year-old cousin to be punished for rape, right, and we have a family here, and my, my, my cousin or my daughter has been raped, and she's 16 years old, my cousin is 24-year-old, the, the likelihood of me reporting now is going to be less because of the life sentence. Because you know that person is going to be put for away life. Nobody for wants life. to be responsible for the other person's life. I'll tell you that in our culture. For every case that goes to the police, 
for every case that goes to the police, there's another case happening in the back. The uncle they call you, the person answer they call you. So in this situation, so what I'm do you saying think the president's the move thing to do? is making it a difficult for people to report, mm -hmm. and b if I'm a justice, even if I was supposed to find you guilty. But when I look at the case, I say, okay, this person, I want punishment. I want to send them to jail for 10 years. Now, it's going to be less likely for me to find you guilty because I don't want to send you for life. I think you have done a crime. I, the problem with this is this is why I say rape it does not happen in one form. That is a law that's but been passed the law for the rape the of a five-year-old. With the, the magistrates, When you the rape judges, a five-year-old with, with violence, you should go to jail to for life. sentimental and emotional in the dispensation of but their that's duties. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's going to make it A, what we want to fight rape. The evidence suggests that what makes a difference is the certainty of punishment. So what would have made, we what would have made that declaration report? a solution? How would it I'm not saying anything? it's not a solution. I'm saying it means well. I'm saying to the president and everybody in general. So if you were to in a position to advise the president, what would you what advise me in that is regard? Basically, in my piece, I said we needed a floor. They've created a ceiling. We need a mandatory minimum. Any rape of a minor carries with it a sentence of a minimum of 10 or 15 years. It starts there. If violence is involved, we add another 10 years on top. If it is a if child is less than 10 years old, we add another 10 years on top. If it leads to injury or something, another 10 years on top. Then a justice has the flexibility to apply those principles on top of it. What, Not need, just an open, um, what we need is to make sure to more people report president. rape. We need to break the silence. Now that this I've been life able sentence to get that, does not help now us that to I've been that. able to get that clearly, again, Cherno, there's a, another big challenge in the country. We don't have the required, um, well, gadgets, I would yeah, say, in the country. Sense. You don't have a DNA testing machine. You don't have the machine that tests to yeah. tell this person your age because in some of these cases, the people don't even know their ages. The, 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 even so the true. parents or guardians don't know. That's not a 18-year-old. So we don't, have, we don't have a way to determine your age or we don't have the machines to test DNA to say, yes, there was a, a case of sexual assault by Mr. X against Ms. Z because there's proven DNA that your semen was found in this person and blah, blah, blah. We don't have all those. So in this case now, it's just blind. You leave it open to witnesses. Witnesses can be bought. Witnesses are not always credible. It depends on how you go about getting your witness, how good of a criminal you can be to yeah, do things. Yeah, so in all these things we have, do we still would we still be able to make headway as a country in fighting race? So my other not criticism, but my comment on the present declaration, people say it shows political will. I say political will is equal to money. President Bill is has incredible political will for two things that I have seen so far. Education. He's put money into it. We all know nobody can doubt the president's political will. You know what else he's demonstrated political will about? Yeah. Football. Okay. They just gave four billion to set up the Sierra Premier League. If we have political will on it, come on. As a state we can buy those machines. Let, let's move beyond the declaration. Let's put our money where our mouth is. We can actually invest in creating rainbow centers all over this country and making sure that no girl who gets raped cannot think about what the cost is going to be to access care. What we need to do is to make this uh, institutional setup. But it pains me when we complain we don't have money. It means we don't take it as seriously yet as we ought to. So That's it's not, uh, yeah, especially that we've declared it to be an emergency. Put money on it. Yes, there is. Of you course, have thoughts on that of as course, well. uh, I, I, I strongly support Chairman's view on that. Um, the, the, the president has made a very important declaration to end the rape, and I think it's it's a laudable. Uh, but it uh, needs to be backed by the resources. Of it to needs fight to be backed because we're actually working towards serving justice to people to rape victims. How do we get to achieve that without the available resources? And you also don't want in the process to wrongfully convict those who are innocent. Yes. Those who have been framed yeah. for foolish reasons could be. And yeah, so which is why I think the government can always do better. First of all, uh, one, one way it can strongly manifest that is by investing in resources that will aid um, rape investigations. 
and be able to track down evidences as to whether a rape really happens or not. So I think it the government stands such um, the, the government has all what it takes to make those resources available. It's a matter of you know the willingness to do it. And just before I move to the audience to hear their interesting thoughts on this issue, um, one more aspect is the aspect of the judiciary. All of this can be put into place, all of these things can be said, but the bulk of the action is dependent on the judiciary. Just days after the um, Hands Off Our Girls campaign was launched, we saw the ridiculous mockery of that by the sentence, sentencing of two days Justice of one, you, one man, hours. sentencing yeah. one person, just saying because he's mentally deranged, without a psychological evaluation, there was no psychiatric doctor to do the evaluation so that in itself was a mockery so everything we do now comes down to the courts how well do they utilize the laws how well do they prosecute these cases in that area of the judiciary um journal how do you see us making heavy so the problem again i like to go back to a culture of rape and the judiciary is part and parcel of that culture how in fact the judiciary continues so you mentioned the thousands of rape cases that are reported now in the country, less than 5% make it through the courts and even less than that gets convictions. Uh, gets convictions. When there are convictions, so you mentioned the Justice Alu case. So my organization, we heard about that. We were offended. We offered to pay to get the Supreme Court to overturn what was clearly an insulting uh, ruling that was biased Very provocative. And, and was raping not only that one 13 year old girl but also women folks in this country. I'll tell you what happened. We, to, to, to get a review, you have to apply to the law officer's department. Our application is still waiting. First, we applied, we had a 21 day period. Now to make that application, let me tell you how ridiculous the judiciary is in this country. The cost of that for most lawyers to take a case to the, to the first to the appeals courts where we wanted to go and enter the Supreme Court, it cost about $20,000. My organization said, yes, this is a big case. We want to make an example. We'll pay for it. We offered the prosecution, which is the state. We said, we now only pay. No, we'll take this case. We're still waiting for the permission to take the case. So the culture of rape is so institutionalized of impunity. They do not, they do not believe women. When a woman, so when you think about the judiciary, the justice system, I think about it. When a woman in Kailan or in uh, my 91 where we just were goes to reports that have been raped the first thing the police does is to give you a piece of paper and say go to a hospital now if you are in my 91 the hospital is in Maboka so you have to go two hours away from your place they don't feel the sense of responsibility so we need to retrain our police officers the president announced very laudably the creation of a new special police unit we need a new special court units. We need courts in this country dedicated to just sexual violence and all forms of domestic violence. We need to treat these things together. Until we do that, until we pay prosecutors specifically to just handle this case, until we invest in the machines you've talked about, then as a state, we will continue to treat this issue with lip service, which is a shame. Thank you very much, Ferry and Chair. Now let me turn the conversation over to the audience. I'm particularly interested in hearing your thoughts on this. You could ask a question or you could just make a statement, perhaps as your own opinion or comment on this entire issue as we wrap up. Yes, let's hear your, 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 your submissions. Who goes first? Yes, go on, lady. My name is Adam Mali. Well, in the case of the police officers and the people, I can report a case to the police and they will just tell you, like, like your business, like your case. Well, the first dog get the wrong time and go to and say, like, case, just come in a man, like, case. How can a police officer tell the um, perpetrator to go and meet the owner of the case to go and to go and beg the person to get all the case? And there will be some elders, pastors, imams, they will all join hands together to come and plead with the person. And there's no way. And it's supposed to be a state crime. Yeah. When you do that, you don't have a case with the individual. You yeah. Have a case so with the I, state. I just want, to, I just want to make the police notice that. That is their case. Whenever a uh, perpetrator meet them, it's okay. The person will come, the the um, the victim's friend will come to give the case. Just tell them, okay, the case has been returned. 
But beyond that, you should take the case to another level because it's not a community case, it's a state case. So you need to put it into consideration. Just tell the person, okay, the case is done. You have you done your case. But this case is not your case. It's a state. It's a state case. So oh, that's a beautiful So situation. we have to deal with it. We have so the public school will not just go meet the person. The person they are sitting innocently, okay, I don't put me up by the case. But the case is still going on because it's with the state. With the Thank state. you very much. I like that submission. That's a very, 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 very good one. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, Hello. my dear. My name is Mohamed Al Fatal. Like in this case, like I was trying to ask a question. You understand? There are some cases, a boy and a girl reach an agreement, you understand? They go in there to whatever they are doing. But after everything, the boy doesn't reach his agreement. And the boy, the girl walk to the police station and says, boy, scrape me. So what do you share is going to do about that? Oh, wow. Okay, you're talking about cases of um, deceit, because that can be deceitful. Yeah. There's no way, it's not right, especially as you've mentioned, a boy and a girl meaning both of them are minors. There's no way you could have made that wrong decision as a girl to allow any, to give any boy permission to say sleep with me. And then you turn around to go to the police and report a case of rape. That is deceitful. So it comes down to what we were talking about, getting the gadgets in the country to ascertain. Because sometimes when you have a very good investigators with all these things around, they'll be able to tell you, well, from the examination we've conducted, this did not show any forceful penetration. So all those things will come out. Yes, more submissions? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to generally, like, one of the ways in which we can reduce the rate of rape is, first, we have to do with the mindset. The mindset of, of various, of those involved have to be renewed. Like the area of the main, you know, you have to exercise your power. You know, power can be exercised, they need to be taught that this power can be exercised, but not in this way. And with the, the women, they have also have to be taught how to be confident and bold enough to stand up for themselves and to be aware in order to just, in order to avoid incidents like that. And uh, with the judiciary, I think they need to be more disciplined and more strict with the actions they take. And there's an area of this where you say, you know, uh, it's a feeling, na nature. Well, actually, this is something that can be controlled. Yeah, it's a feeling, na nature. But why, when you feel like using the toilet, you don't just do it in a PZ, say na yeah. nature? <laughs> why don't you just do it at PZ, where everybody's watching you, na nature? Yeah. Mm, yes. And else, coming. It's like it. Um, we have feelings as human beings. We are not a feeling. And what we have, we have to control. So if it's a feeling, so learning how to have to restrain, to, just have to, to yes, control, control yourself it and get your mind being you, or how you react to things. Thank you very feelings. much. That's also a good submission. Yes, let's hear from you. Okay, my name is Josephine. Um, of the and I want to make a contribution towards the main discussion here, and especially this is going for the parents, right? Because um, once people are saying that, I want to thought her how to fight back whenever a man wants to torture. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the wrong places. Wrong yeah. places that she's not expecting some touch. I, want, I just want to say, um, not all parents have that time to put the children down to discuss about rape. And if you look about Syria, the country we are living, not everybody is educated. Not everybody have that idea, that mentality to say, I will put my child down to teach her about how to go on in life, or about how men are doing, or the bad things men are doing to them. So I just want to say, um, doing that, I think parents out there need sensitization to teach them more about rape or how to take care of their kids. Because you have some parents who leave home in the morning and return home at night. You do not know what a child is doing, you do not know what the child does every day. So I think parents should have uh, more caring, they should know where the child goes, what the child do, or what the child wear. Because I bless one of the parents, right? Because we don't know how that idea to say, okay, if you can know this age, I'll make my child sexy. So some of the boys out there, some of the men out there, they regret because of the attraction they get. Some they regret because of maybe they get family issue and all them to give or this, that. But if mom and dad are in the house, they say, okay, I'll have that idea to go back to have that child. Just okay, cool. that's a very beautiful submission. Well, it's been a pleasure hearing from all of you and hearing from you, Cheno, and from Therese. So, in summary, as we, we, we end the program now, 
If you have been a victim of rape, do not be shy or scared to come public and talk about it. If your family is not listening, if the people at home are not listening, the police should listen. If the police are not listening, you simply go to the media. You would have the media, you would have civil society organizations, you have activists, you have rainbow centers across the country. All you have to do is push, 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 push until somebody somewhere decides to listen to you. Don't blame yourself, it's not your fault. The way you dress is not a justification for someone to rape you. The person should learn restraint. So don't blame yourself and feel free to come public to talk about it. If you talk about it and someone is stigmatizing you, look that person in the face and say, you are the idiot. I am not the idiot for coming public to talk about it. So if anybody tries to stigmatize you, give the person the hell of embarrassment you can. That person would surely deserve it. Because they say, who feels it, knows it. Not everybody would understand because not everyone has gone through the experience of rape. But we know it's a difficult situation and it's not beautiful in any way. Nobody is wishing that on themselves. For the parents and the guardians, please pay attention to your kids. If you've spent the day away from home working, yes, to give them a better life when you're back home, please have a talk with them. Pay attention to how the kid is working, is walking rather. Is there a difference in the, in, in the pattern of walking? You would want to pay attention. What's wrong with you? Why are you limping? What's wrong? Pay attention to your kids. And don't be too... Don't be too um, old-fashioned to say, I would not talk to my kids about sex. No, you're not pushing them, you're just giving them sex education. Let them know that it's not right for a man to pass by and touch your boobs or spank you on your bum. It's not right. Let them know that it's not right for a man to say, I'm a small wife this, and call them, okay, can I be one color send you? It's not right. Let the kids know what's right and what's wrong. Do not allow men to come and say, me small wife. Why not say, we begin? You understand? So pay attention to your kids in a way that they would grow up to be well. And don't just dismiss what your kids say. If the kid comes back and say, that uncle is touching me inappropriately, you should not just because, say because well, that uncle is the one taking care of us in this home, I would not pay attention to that. You're actually mortgaging that child's well-being. It's not a good thing. So please pay attention. To the authorities, yes, um, the submissions have been made here about recommendations, how we can do it better. To the judiciary, this is all up to you. You need to make sure when the cases come, you prosecute them timely because justice delayed is justice denied. Do it timely and pay attention to it and just don't give out ridiculous sentences. They have to make sense. They have to be justifiable in a way that if anybody challenges any jurisdiction, any judgment, there is enough evidence to say this was right because of XYZ reason. As a country, as a community, rape does not happen in a place where aliens live. It happens around us. Please be more vigilant. If there were kids playing and they just disappeared because a man passed, please pay attention. If you hear kids crying inside, even if they're with their dads, please go and check. They will call you Kumbusa, you know bad. But you know it's okay because as a country, we all have roles to play to make sure our girls, our kids grow up to be good people in society. So please be vigilant. If you see a kid who does not look 18 with a man, you're not sure this is okay. It's okay for you to go. Let them call you Kumbusa, but at least you fulfill the thought in you. Your conscience is clear that you did something as an individual in the country to help reduce rape. So these are the best things we can say for now. There are more ways in, as in how we can reduce rape in the country. Please be vigilant and let's do this together as a country and reduce rape in Sierra Leone. I am Phoebe Will and you've been watching the Phoebe Will platform and that's all for today. Thanks to our sponsors Raquel Commercial Bank and Sarah Farmer Cheers.